see if we see that back and forth motion. All right, time for the flag. The flag assembly is an exact replica of the one used on the Apollo missions. The horizontal rod specifically prevents the flag collapsing in a windless environment. Hey, Grant, this is your first rig in space. I gotta go. First up, to confirm the rig in space is working is the all-important control. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. this is the control at regular atmospheric pressure. And uh, I'm just going to shake the flag as if I were an astronaut planting it in the surface of the moon. All right. You ready? Be the astronaut. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right, it's moving. And ready? As expected, the momentum of the twisting and turning quickly dissipates, and the flag is stationary in no time at all. Okay, I guess we uh, put a vacuum on it and see what happens. All right, let's start sucking the air out. So vacuum tech Donna turns on the pumps. This is flag-waving test in a vacuum. Okay, planting it on the surface of the moon, and stop. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> It's moving a lot. It's moving a lot. I mean, still moving. That's awesome. There you go. Without drag or friction from the air, the momentum of Grant's planting action lasts for a surprising amount of time. Could right. be mistaken for a breeze. Yeah. But it's lower air resistance. Comparing it to the control in regular atmospheric pressure illustrates that theory beautifully. So in the vacuum, the flag moved, you know, not just a little bit. It actually moved quite a bit. So that proves you don't need wind in order to move the flag in a vacuum. So unless someone finds a shot of the flag flapping without an astronaut manipulating the flagpole, it's myth busted. We've come all the way to Alabama and the NASA to find out once and for all if the conspiracy theorists were correct. Where are we at? Well, we showed that a moon boot can make a footprint in lunar dust inside of a vacuum. So that one's busted. And momentum alone will keep a flag waving in a vacuum. You don't need any wind. So NASA 2, conspiracy theorists, zero. Next. That's 100% wacky right there. Adam and Jamie float like an astronaut. This is a first, even for me. And spin like something that rhymes with B. Adam and Jamie have already seen that NASA didn't slow down the film to fake the Apollo mission moonwalks. But to conclusively confirm that the footage was shot in one-sixth gravity, they decided they had to experience the real thing. And here at Zero G in Florida, they get to do just that. In order for us to do this accurately, we need to be properly weighted. Since zero G is providing us with the moon's gravity, one-sixth Earth's gravity, I need to have the exact amount of equipment weight on me that the original Apollo astronauts had on the moon. And that's about 180 pounds of stuff. And it's uncomfortable. It's time for the pre-flight briefing with in-flight info from Zero G's Elizabeth Underwood. Elizabeth? Now that we're just about to go on, I want to know how good a simulation of zero gravity is this? It's not a simulation at all. It is the real deal. It's the exact same technique that NASA's been using to train their astronauts for the last 50 years. And it works like this. A series of parabolic arcs will give the passengers the physical sensation of weightlessness. And just for us, the pilot will adjust the angle of the parabola, making the microgravity in the cabin an exact match to the moon's gravitational pull, which just leaves the guys to to step up, strap in, take off, and suit up. I look good, right? It's good. I look damn good. So right now, I'm loaded up with an extra 180 pounds on my body. In a few minutes, we're going to actually get to try this out in Moon's Gravity. And I got to tell you, I can't wait. This is a heavy suit. Adam doesn't have to wait long, because the guides soon have everyone into position for the first pass. And as G-Force One gently arcs into its dive... Ah, oh, that feels cool! Adam and Jamie... Oh, here it comes! ...know what it feels like to walk on the moon. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> that 
That's 100% wacky right there. Calibrated to match the moon's gravitational pull, the guys just get time to take it all in before the call goes out to hit the deck. Because as the plane begins to pull out of the dive, the G-forces go into the positive. There is a cost to being weightless. The other end of the roller coaster, you've got almost twice Earth's gravity. That's kind of terrifying at first, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I've never experienced anything like that. It is really disconcerting to first weigh double your weight and then one-sixth your weight. In fact, at one-sixth my weight, I felt pretty much weightless. I felt like I could jump 10 feet in the air. This was a first, even for me. Now that the guys have their bearings, the testing can begin. Ready? Adam copies the same run and skip as before. Good job. This time, leaving out the jump because of height restrictions in the cabin. The movement felt totally natural as soon as I started doing it. And all the NASA footage makes sense to me now. The skipping they did is a totally efficient way to move in that gravitational pull. I couldn't think of a better confirmation for the NASA footage than trying this myself. When Adam was walking or running, he was experiencing the exact same thing that Neil Armstrong would have on the moon. It was one six Earth's gravity. Adam did a great job with the bungee cords. It looked pretty convincing, but being here on this plane in microgravity and watching him, it's totally different. Nothing really compares to what we saw here on this plane, so as far as I'm concerned, they went to the moon. Dude, that was awesome. We have been very thorough here. Yeah, you can't get much tidier than that. I mean, not only did we start out by replicating precisely the circumstances that theorists say were used to fake the moon footage. But we also put ourselves in a calibrated moon gravity environment. The theory that it's faked, bust. Busted. Hi, I'm Buzz Aldrin. And I've already been to the moon. All you had to do is ask. Anyway, I think the Mythbusters did a great job proving that. In fact, they produced too much material to fit into a single show. If you'd like to see the extra, it's online at discovery.com slash Mythbusters. Coming soon, Adam and Jamie light up a giant laser to put the lights out on the moon landing hoax. When the team began their lunar lunacy jigsaw puzzle... Say hoax. Hoax! They knew they couldn't cover every conspiracy cheerleaders claim. This is the moment of truth. But the few pieces they have put in place... That means it's busted. Totally busted. ...tell the same story. In your face, conspiracy theorists! With the fat lady waiting impatiently in the wings, there's time for just one final test. And not just any old test, but the ultimate proof of man's moon mission. What's this? A reflector. In fact, it's called a retro reflector, made up of many tiny prisms just like this. And did you further know that the Apollo astronauts were nice enough when they visited the moon to leave several of these on the surface so that Earth-bound scientists could point lasers at it and gather information about the moon. So what you're saying is that uh, we get a really big laser and point it at the reflector on the moon, and if we get a signal back, that means that we were, in fact, there. Precisely. Okay, it breaks down like this. A retro reflector bounces light back at the light source, regardless of the angle. This differs from a mirror where the angle of incidence has to be perpendicular. So, if there was a retro reflector on the moon, and we knew its exact location, and we had a powerful enough laser, we could detect the reflection and prove there is man-made equipment on the moon. What are we supposed to be doing? Uh, technically, we're supposed to have a conversation about where we are. Oh, uh, you mean like the Apache Point Observatory? This thing right here is the Apache Point Observatory. What a view. And these guys have the tools that we need to put the final nail in the coffin on the moon landing hoax. Yep, up here.